you want to create a successful, entertaining, and informative science communication-based YouTube channel? Well, I'm here to tell you all you need is a camera, like your phone, some software, and an idea. Today, we're going to talk about how to build a science communication-based YouTube channel, and I'm here to provide you a few other tips on things that I've learned as I've been making my own science communication-based YouTube channel. My name is Amari Walker, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to press the subscribe button down below and the notification link so you can know when my next videos come out. And don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below informing me of any other questions or handy tips for future videos. So first, why should you do it? Why make a science communication based YouTube channel? Well, I'll say it's a very easy way to reach a large audience and teach them about some really cool science. Not only that, but you also get to build on your written and oral communication skills. That means that you have to be able to talk to people that are not well acquainted with the science topic at hand and present it in a way that's entertaining and understandable to wide audiences. These skills are great not only just for a YouTube channel, they're great for almost any career in science that you can think of, whether that is working in industry or academia as a teacher, or even moving into government, working with policymakers that don't understand the science and just need to know what is the bottom line associated to this topic. How do you actually make these videos? I separate them into four different topics. So that is the technical, the software, the idea, and then the little things. So on the technical side, when we're talking about technical, we're talking about the camera, the lighting, the sound, those things that make a video quality much better for people to view and understand. On the side of videos, you can use anything as simple as your phone camera. So what I use is an iPhone Pro 11, and I actually use the back camera instead of the front. Why? Because the camera on the back actually has better quality to it, and it allows me to focus in on the camera itself and not on the main screen overall. While having the front facing camera is great to make sure that you have the right angle on your face, it's a little bit more difficult to make sure that you're looking directly into the camera because it's very awkward if you're looking a little bit to the side and it kind of detaches the audience from the video. Some other very handy things to have when you're using an iPhone camera is a tripod. I originally made a few videos with just holding my phone up and recording and it works, but I'll tell you it's a incredible exercise in your arms and it's not really well balanced to make good videos and you can get a little bit shaky. So you can try that for a little bit, but after a while I would probably recommend getting a tripod of some kind. And then you get both your hands so that you can have more props and do more interesting things on your set, so to speak. Another thing on the technical side is lighting. My tripod actually has a ring light attached to it. It's very great to have, especially when you're doing video sets where there's not a lot of natural light. But most of the time, it's very good to try and angle yourself in front of a window or as much natural light as possible so you can get good lighting for your videos. But if not, definitely set up a tripod with a ring light and, you know, do your videos that way. When I bought my tripod, it was about 30 bucks on Amazon, and I can even include the link if you all are interested in buying one for yourself. The next thing is audio. So you wanna have pretty good sound for people to hear and understand you correctly when you're talking. Uh, one thing that can be very difficult is noise bouncing off the walls. One thing that can really hinder your sound quality is the echo that occurs in a room. And so getting things like my little styrofoam Cheez-Its really help in lessening the echo in the room and then also making sure you turn off your air conditioning unit. Now I made that mistake for at least five or six of my videos where I could hear the actual air conditioning turning on and off and so it really threw the sound quality off. Maybe not everybody else heard it but when you're video editing for hours at a time it gets to be bothersome um, and tricky. So make sure you turn your air conditioning unit off Try and make sure that you can avoid some of the echo and any of the outdoor noise in your space. And even think about getting a attachable microphone 
or any of the other fun stuff. Um, but right now I'm just using the sound quality of the iPhone and it's not that bad. And with some software, I can make it a little bit better. Once you get done with the actual technical side of knowing what you need to get set up and you've recorded your video, you're gonna wanna get really involved into software for making videos and designing. For making videos, you can use things that actually come in your phone app, like iMovie, or you can buy something a little bit more expensive and gives you higher video quality production value. What I use is Adobe Premiere Pro. That's a really great software to actually do some video design and editing. And I use LinkedIn Learning to actually spend a weekend. It was at least three to four days going through coursework online on how to edit and trim things together. And I'll admit to you, I had never had any experience making videos like that before. And so it was a pretty large learning curve, but spend a few days on it and you should be good to go to at least start a few videos and see how comfortable you are with the software. Once you have your video making software in place, you also wanna think about some of the graphic design elements you wanna include in your videos. Graphic design elements are very important for your thumbnail to get people to actually click on your link and get interested. Even for logos that you can include in your videos as watermarks and just graphic design elements that are added into your videos like adding slides, informing people of the topic, or just interesting things in the middle of your video for fun. Great design software includes Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Design, and if you need to do something a little bit simpler, even PowerPoint can work for you if you just know how to set the right dimensions and get the things that you're looking for. I currently use Affinity Design and it's very similar to Illustrator, but it was $60 for a license. And once you kind of get used to all the buttons and tools, it's really helpful for not just designing graphically for videos, but also even for making figures and you know designing uh, anything else, like things on your website. So highly recommend getting some kind of design software and learning how to use it. Once you know how to get good production value quality videos and designs for those videos, you're gonna have to think about, well, what is my video gonna be about? What is the idea behind this YouTube channel? And just the, the next topic at hand. When you're making these videos, you're gonna have to state the actual main point first, and then go into, so what? Why the audience should care. And then finally end with a little bit of details and supporting information to help people understand why you came to that conclusion. In science and especially in research, that's almost an inverted triangle because we're used to explaining the general concepts of the topic that have been done beforehand and then going into a little bit of the details and the methods and then finally reaching your conclusion. So when you're doing science communication, you're gonna wanna flip that all the way upside its head because people wanna know the bottom line. They wanna know why they should care and they wanna know what the main point is first. And then if you entrance them, they'll learn a little bit more of the details and you know, engage more with the topic. Really spend a lot of time thinking about the main point in your video and doing your research on the topic. Read articles, whether that is news articles and scientific articles you can get access to. You're gonna wanna fully understand what those articles are and be able to communicate them to other people. Don't forget to include those articles at the bottom of your videos in your description because you may only include a few tidbits and important things that you find are gonna be necessary to convey your topic, but other people might wanna fact check you and they might wanna learn more. And so giving them the power to actually access what you had access to is very important. So you've scripted your video out, you've produced it, you've started editing, but you can't forget the little things about your YouTube channel and your YouTube video itself. One of the little things that really adds value to your video is adding a catchy intro. Having something that within the first 30 seconds to a minute captures your audience's attention. Sometimes when their mouse hovers over your video, they'll show the first 30 seconds. And if it's very interesting to them, they'll actually fully click on the link and learn more about your topic. So making it funny, entertaining, or even something serious that's actually provocative that makes people say, huh, I wanna know more about that. It doesn't matter what your style is. It is really just the goal of catching your audience's attention and saying, 
this video is so important for you to learn more about and I'm here to entertain you in that process. The next little thing is no jargon. So really take out all the scientific terms from this process. If you use too many big words, people are gonna lose interest and say, this is not for me, this is for just some other scientists and they're gonna click off your video. So leave the jargon in the conference room. And finally, show your enthusiasm. When you show people that you're super excited about this topic and how much you love science, they're gonna be really engaged in you as a person and they're gonna to wanna to continue watching your videos. So don't forget this is supposed to be a fun experience and really to be able to share your love and passion for science. Other questions that I've received include, how long does it actually take to make a video and publish it to YouTube? When I'm making a script, it can take anywhere from 30 minutes to even four hours. It's a huge time difference, but it really depends on the topic that I'm talking about, how well I understand it, and how much time it takes me to read up on the subject so that I'm fully confident in the information that I'm trying to convey. And when I wanna make it fun and catchy and entertaining, sometimes that requires multiple characters or different kinds of skits to make it interesting, or even making a newscast segment. So the more creative and design oriented I am towards how I want the video to be, the more intensive the script can be as well. So making sure you're doing the research, including entertaining tidbits, those can take a little bit more time than just freely talking on the camera. Once the script is made, it's then time to start actually making the video and producing it. And that can take anywhere from one to even two or three hours itself. And again, that just depends on the type of video, if I have to do different outfit changes for the fun factor, or if I need to spend more time memorizing the script. So not every script I use, I fully memorize. Sometimes I have my computer there to remind me other things I need to say or have a fully written out script. So I have to make sure I'm reading exactly what I need to read from my computer. So no teleprompter, but kind of close. When I do scripts, it can vary from being a fully formed video script where every sentence has been written and needs to be said the way it needs to be said, or I just add basic bare bone outlines of the topic at hand that I want to discuss. And so that can be a more free flowing conversation. You just really have to decide what your style is in making videos and what you're most comfortable with in front of the camera, because sometimes going off the bat and off your brain can take a little bit longer to get comfortable saying what you want to say and truly convey. So once the video has been taped, it's then time to transfer those files onto your computer or start video editing on the phone itself. And that process for me can take a very long time, anywhere from three to five, sometimes 10 hours. So I can spend a few days at least just looking at the video, making sure that all the design elements, all the cuts that I want, are perfect for the video. And that just really depends on how nitpicky you are with removing the ums and the so's and the, any of the slip ups that you make in a normal conversation. And especially if you're new to video editing, that can take a little bit longer because you're gonna have to get used to cutting and shortening clips to adding transitions and fixing the audio so that they all sound the same, even adding background noise. Finding songs that are not copyright are very important to add in the background sometimes to keep people engaged and interested as well. And so adding both of those elements in and making sure that your audio sounds right can be a little bit of playing around. Video editing is probably the longest part of the process, at least for me personally, just to make sure that I have the video in the quality that I like and all the extra fun tidbits that I want to include. And so sometimes it's also good to write out everything that you want, what kinds of transitions, what kinds of funny sound effects, even what noises you want to include at the end or what photos and videos you want to include alongside your video. Those can all take extra time, but can make your video a little bit more entertaining to work with. So you've produced the video, you've actually released it to the public on YouTube. But the next thing you need to do is market. What's the time frame for that? That is infinite. You don't stop marketing your channel. You don't start marketing your videos because it's going to take a while to build a good audience. And if you want to monetize your channel, it's going to take even longer than just getting people interested in watching your videos because 
you need 1,000 subscribers, and you need 4,000 watch hours within one year. And those are not easy accomplishments, especially because YouTube is a hyper competitive market. And so you have to do a lot of work to get people to click on your links and get the YouTube algorithm to work in your favor so that your videos are showing up closer to the top when people look up keywords. Marketing can include anything from how well you describe your videos, all the keywords you include in the description and the hashtags, to going outside of YouTube itself, going to your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, TikTok, get them all and describe to people what your YouTube is about, why it's important for people to care, and ask people just to share it. Engaging others outside of YouTube is a great way to get people to actually come and get invested in your channel. Those are most of my tidbits of what is very important when you're making a science-based YouTube channel. But a few other things to think about is uh, think about the niche that you're trying to meet in YouTube. What is the hole that YouTube is missing that you're trying to fill? Think about exactly the kind of science that you're communicating, what kind of audience you're trying to engage with, and kind of act accordingly. If you're trying to reach out to a younger generation, try and make it a little bit more funny or entertaining to get people to stay on your channel, or even add some kind of TikTok elements to your videos. And think about the next 30 to 50 videos that you plan on making. Because if you cannot list out a year's worth of videos, it's going to be very hard to build a sustainable lifelong YouTube channel because it's going to take a while to get people invested. And it doesn't usually happen overnight, the ability to monetize and get lots of subscribers and people interested. So you got to have a successful lineup of all the videos you plan to make for at least the next year or so. So maybe it's one video a week, two videos a week, or even every other week or monthly. But you need to know at least a plan for your next 30 videos because that's going to tell you exactly where people are most interested in your first 30 or so and then where you need to focus on more because you've engaged that corner of YouTube's attention. Next, you need to tell your friends and family, coworkers, so on about your channel. You've got to get people to know that this is what you want to do. This is what you're really engaged and excited about because those are going to be your first subscribers. They're going to be the people that are sharing your videos and they're going to help hype you up to other people that don't know who you are or what you're about. Really don't be afraid to share with people your excitement for this next journey of yours uh, because it's really going to help you in the future. And finally, don't forget to have fun making these videos. This is not supposed to be an arduous task, things that pain you personally to get in front of a camera. This is a great way to practice public speaking, written and oral communication, and just sharing science with a different crowd than just what you would find in a scientific conference. Enjoy it, be creative. You know, while we're all staying home, socially distant and wearing our masks, this is a great time to make a YouTube channel and engage with new people. This world is very isolating right now and a YouTube channel is a great way to expand your network and meet new people. Really enjoy this, have fun, and yeah, I wish you the best of luck. So those are my tidbits for how to create a science communication based YouTube channel, going from the technical steps to even thinking about and delivering your actual videos. If you have any other questions about making this kind of channel or making these kinds of videos, please post a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on, on this video. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter or Instagram. My handle is at calamari93. So look forward to engaging with you all on these multiple platforms. Take care.